Welcome lovely people. Today we have a generator quiet box build. In this box I have a Westinghouse 13500 watt generator. Big boy. About, what is it? Yeah, 13500 peak watts. 10,500 running watts. So, we got a lot to do to build this box. There's a lot of different parts. Not that many actually. In fact, if you put together all the parts, it actually comes out to only being about $541 for the entire build. You will need some fire block, but that's just about another $10. I forgot to mention you need a blast gate to get your cable in and out. That blast gate adds about $20 bucks or at $570. For about $1,300 rounded up. It's I got it for $1,269. So if we were to get everything today, you can get this whole build, including the generator, for $1,810. Okay, so for all the people in the comments that are like, oh, just get a Honda, you know? Well, guess what? If I were to get a Honda that can put out 10500 Running watts, I'm paying about $10,500, okay? I'm not even paying $2,000 for this generator plus the box. Yeah, it's some more effort, but really not that much. You're going to see that in this build. So let's go over all the parts you're going to need for this generator quiet box. Okay, first, you're going to need, of course, the generator. But let's just say, you are you know, everybody has a different generator. But let's just say you have a big one like me. Okay, you're going to need a shed that can accommodate that generator. And I'll be honest, the shed I got just barely fit my generator. And I do kind of, re you know, regret not getting a, a shed just a little bit bigger because it would have been nice to have a little bit more space. The more air room you have around your generator, the better. Because the more air around it, the less you're going to have issues with the whole thing getting hot. But I got this shed here off of Amazon, 34 cubic foot, for $230, okay? And this just barely fit my generator with the wheels off. With the wheels on, it won't fit in there. Next, you're going to need a generator exhaust compatible muffler kit. Or maybe not muffler is not the word, but it, it's basically, it's going to vent the exhaust out. So it's basically like a stainless steel hose that attaches to your generator's exhaust. This can be bought on Amazon for about $130. And... Yeah, it's a pretty simple thing. It also does reduce some of the noise, and this is the safest way, well, one of the safer ways to get your generator exhaust to get out of the box because it's going to keep it enclosed, and this wall-mounted plate is insulated. Well, not the plate is not insulated, but the pipe is, so it doesn't heat up the, the whole box too much on the output. Next, you're going to need an exhaust fan. Now, this is super important. You have to have airflow in this box. Your generator will overheat. You will kill it if you don't have any type of airflow. So you have to have this exhaust fan. Um, and you, the bigger, the better, okay? Honestly, I got a 14-inch, but I could have got a 16-inch. It would have been even better. When I was doing my research, a ton of videos... They really only talk about this exhaust fan, which pulls the generator airflow from vents on the other side to cool it down. I kind of regret not actually going through and getting an intake fan as well. I think you should have both. You know, think about the human body. You inhale and exhale. You need the intake and the exhaust. So... I actually, I didn't get this at the time of this build, but I am I have ordered this and I'm going to install this. And basically, this is the exact same fan as the other fan, right, in terms of, you know, how it works. But instead of pulling air, this pushes air into the box. So now we'll have a fan pulling air in and a fan pulling that air out to allow for really good uh, ventilation and cooling. That's optional. If you get that, that adds another 36 bucks, okay? Uh, next, you're going to need some vents, okay? The vents, you're going to need two of them, okay? I got two of them. You could get even bigger than what I got. I got 14 by 6 inches, right? You can get one really big one or two big ones. Here's the good thing about this, or, or the general concept with this type of thing. The bigger, the better with all this stuff. When it comes to the shed... When it comes to the generator, when it comes to the fan, when it comes to the vents, you can't really overdo it, but you certainly can underdo it, okay? And I'll tell you guys this, the shed I have right now works fine 
when it, the generator is running at about up to half load, but once I turn on my plastic into fuel reactor and this generator is running at full load, I have to open up the doors. It gets too hot because I don't have an intake fan, I don't have big enough vent, I don't have enough airflow for a full load generator. It produces way more heat, so you see you gotta adapt, but you gotta make sure you're, you're, you're checking so you don't kill your generator. If I open up all the doors, it's fine, but then it kind of defeats the point because it's loud as hell. So I'm trying to you know, alleviate that by getting some fans, but I might need two fans, three fans, might need, I might need two exhaust fans and two intake fans. You don't really know, okay? You don't really know until you do your little experiments to measure dependent upon how hard you use your generator. I know most people that would actually be building this box won't be using a generator to almost its absolute peak wattage. That's just me, because I'm running a freaking plastic to fuel reactor off of this thing, right? But that's not gonna be you, so, Anyways, you got your vents, and then you just need some fire block. And that fire block, like I said, is about 10 bucks, whatever, cheap stuff, easy. And then you're gonna need your blast gate as well, and this is simple, it just is where your 50 amp cable is gonna go through. I got a four inch blast gate, and I had to kinda cut the handle off my 50 amp plug to make it fit, so I recommend getting five to six inches if you can, but a four inch will work if you are fine with cutting the plastic handle off your cord. And speaking of fire block, the last thing you need is actually gonna be some type of sound deadening and heat shield material. So I have this from AG Sound. You can get it for $57, and this has aluminum foil on one side and a sound deadening material on the other. And it's important you get something like this because you just need something between the plastic and the generator to just keep the heat off of it. So that way you don't risk the plastic melting or catching on fire. It's not worth it. It doesn't have to be something crazy because the highest temperature you want internal in there because you have good airflow is about 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't want anything above that or you're gonna hurt your generator. And anything above that, you know, will damage plastic and stuff too. But 140 degrees is not going to melt plastic, okay? Uh, most of the time so and you're gonna have this on top of there anyway and this also is sound deadening as well so it's gonna help um you know absorb some of the sounds so those are all the materials without further ado let's get to the build thank you all very much for watching those of you that want to show some appreciation and love to the channel and the project of plastic and the fuel remember you can pick up some merch naturejab.com slash merch or you can donate we have all the donation possibilities that that exist, naturejab.com slash donate. You guys stay blessed and thank you very much for watching. Wow, it's actually quite a noticeable difference. So we got the generator here. First step is to get it in the box and if you have to, take off the wheels. In my case, I gotta take off the wheels. But if you want to also, before you take off the wheels, I just wanted to go ahead and measure where everything was gonna go because it's easier to move it around with the wheels on obviously. So here I'm just cutting out the port for the exhaust. We gotta spray in some fire block into the gaps. Remember to fill your cracks, guys. So next was the hole for the blast gate. Four inch hole here. Go ahead and cut her out. I don't show it, but I fill my cracks with fire block. This is the vent fan. This is going to be what actually takes the hot air and pushes it out. So, this has got to go right here. 
Get powerful WordPress hosting that builds this chance with zero. So after installing the cutout for that fan, the exhaust fan, I went ahead and installed these vents. That intake fan that I'm going to be putting in is actually going to take the place of this top vent here. So that's a fun fact. I'm going to be applying this sound deadening material by Ag Sound all around the shed. This material is heat proof and does a good job at deadening sound and vibration. So it will not catch on fire provide some good soundproofing. This particular material has adhesive on the back, so it's a pretty easy install. All right, so let's see how the generator sounds, how loud it is outside the box. Let's see how loud it is from the same distance inside the box. Wow, it's actually quite a noticeable difference. 